education, how it can be privatized? Oh, in many, many ways. We're seeing in higher education a standardization, a good, big standardization of courses, which can be delivered, for instance, um, over the internet. They're delivered through franchises to campuses in different universities in different parts of the world. So instead of having a, a teacher having a direct relationship with the class, <coughs> increasingly the teacher writes a course. Um, the PowerPoint slides are put on an internet somewhere, or on the, or, or you know, or, or, or you know, on the, on the World Wide Web for people to access. They they might have local tutors who talk them through the work, but the the, the contact between the students and the teacher is is really broken. So you have the actual teaching being standardised and modified, but you also there's been a huge outsourcing of things like school management, cleaning, secretarial services. There's also been a, a de-skilling of teachers. Of, of the, You have a, a smaller and smaller number of qualified teachers and a larger and larger numbers of teaching assistants who do more and more of the work in very standardised ways, who are not so skilled. You get the same trend in hospitals where more and more tasks are put onto the nurses because they're cheaper, and, and, the, and the doctors do less and less. They do these very, more and more specialist things. What happens with the quality? You might get an increase in quality for very standard things, because what happens is, for instance, in the health service, instead of having a kind of holistic view of the patient as a whole human being, uh, the, the GP becomes like a... Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the general doctor is like triage, you know, you go to the GP, he says, oh, you have a problem with your knee, you go to the knee specialist. And then you have a, a, a one specialist clinic that does only knee replacement operations, like a production line. And because they do them every day, then they probably do them quite well. But then if you have a complication, or you, if you have something which they can't quite diagnose, mm -hmm. then you don't fit neatly into this standardised system. Um, I had a very scary story the other day. There is one of the biggest um, companies out doing outsourced healthcare in the UK is actually an IT company, and I couldn't think why. And then I uh, heard about a presentation that was made at a conference by this IT company, and they presented their vision of the future of health. And the vision of the future of health is you have an app on your iPhone, and all your details are on a database, and you tap in on your iPhone, and you say, I've got a sore throat. And the, and the app says, well, given your family history, given your medical history, we think this is what's wrong with you. Click here to order the drugs from our favoured supplier. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, yes. And you can imagine education being a little bit like that too. How yes. <laughs> is this the future we want? This is the logical future that they see. Uh, are the unions aware of the problem of outsourcing? I think the unions are very demoralised. They are in the public. The public sector unions are fighting cuts. In, in every country in Europe, I think, there are dramatic public spending cuts because of austerity. So the first thing they have to do is try to defend their jobs. And if some of these jobs are not, don't up, disappear but get transferred to a private company, then what they try to do is they say, OK, well, when they're transferred, at least we'll try and protect the pension rights, we'll uh, you know, tr try and protect the pay, try and protect the basic things. But of course, the way these companies operate in the first wave of outsourcing, they need these people because they need their knowledge and skills. Mm -hmm. But then very quickly they incorporate them. Mm -hmm. They don't need them for very long. They say, give me your 20 most frequently asked questions. They put them on a database. They get people in India to do the work much cheaper, keep only a few people in the front office. And so there's only quite a small moment when these union members might have some, some power. But what I think the union should be doing which they're not yet, but mm -hmm. is to recognize that these are global companies and to, to organize internationally. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Poštovani gledatelji, bila je ovo britanska sociologinja Ursula Hughes. Hvala vam na pozornosti. Doviđenja.